Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So I got kind of an interesting uh, checkout here that's uh, that you guys might like. Um, what we have is um, we have an optical flat uh, that was sent to me by a friend of mine in Southern California, uh, Rick Horaname, and we got to talking at the bash, and I mentioned. You know, he was talking about buying an optical flat off eBay and how, you know, it's kind of a tricky thing to find one that's in good condition, right? So I suggested uh, um, some Russian surplus ones that I'd been looking at. And, uh, and this is one of them, actually. Um, it's 80 millimeter diameter, and it's actually, turns out that it's a really, really nice optical flat. Anyway, they sell for pretty cheap on, on eBay, and there's quite a few of them around. Um, anyway, kind of on spec, he bought one and then was having trouble having it produce uh, fringes that he could look at. So that's what we're going to help Rick with and see if we can see some fringes and uh, look at this uh, cool Russian optical flat. All right, what I got here is I have the optical flat that Rick sent me and I have a couple, I have three surfaces that we're going to take a look at. Um, but first, before we uh, get into that, uh, I want to show you a magic trick. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of neat. And it's, it's interesting because I, I took this little piece of paper to work. And um, this is a, uh, um, basically a certificate of accuracy from the uh, manufacturer. And um, uh, we have a couple of uh, native Russian speakers, uh, scientists that I work with at work, and I had both of them look at this, and uh, it was actually kind of entertaining to uh, to have them translate this. So, but like I said, I want to show you a magic trick first. So let's let's do that, and uh, I think you guys will like this, and it's something that you guys can do yourself uh, with. Oops, excuse me. Uh, similar uh, similar kinds of uh, of. Uh, <laughs> articles. Okay, so here's the calibration certificate that came with the optical flat. And some of you guys out there may be native speakers and can actually read this already. Um, and, you know, just kind of glancing at it, it's got some numbers on it and dates and things like that and serial numbers that we can identify even though we can't speak Russian. But, oh, but wait, we can. So on your phone, Google Translate um, if you hit this little picture icon here, okay, let's see if we can get this thing to happen here. Yeah, let's do that. So, how do you like that? So, we are reading Russian even though we can't. <laughs> Somebody showed me this the other day, and I was just kind of blown away, and uh, that uh, that this could this could actually happen. So we are truly living in the future. And like I said, I had uh, a couple of uh, native speakers uh, look at this and uh, they were actually amazed uh, at the uh, the translation. And, you know, they, they had some comments and <laughs> said it was all wrong. But uh, this is a, the sign of very, very high quality uh, in the uh, USSR. So to get this stamp, it was a big deal. This is like the... Uh, um, I don't know, ASTM, um, you know, validation or whatever uh, kind of stamp uh, for uh, the USSR. And what we see here is a deviation from fl flatness is 0 0.07. And this is, says MKM, which is kind of a weird abbreviation for micrometers, otherwise known as microns. Okay. And uh, um, so from this, we can kind of derive uh, uh, some information about this uh, um, about this optical flat here, and uh, it's got the it's going to be really hard to see the serial number on it there uh, as well. So anyway, I thought you guys would get a kick out of that magic trick, and uh, so let's take a look at this optical flat and see if we can get it to to uh, make some fringes. All right. So first up is our gauge block, and we're pretty sure that that's flat nicely so let's wipe this off with a Kim wipe let me give the optical flat a little wipe too and then what I like to do is is blow them off as I'm putting them together let's see what we got here 
Okay, now I can I can see them from where I am here. I'll look at the viewfinder there. And you can see them, but they're pretty faint. And you can see them swishing around a little bit. Let me rotate this. Maybe we can get a better orientation here. Oop. Okay, there's there we go. So they're going across that way. So th this is pretty faint stuff in this particular light. So this is just the fluorescent lights that are in my shop, which happen to be daylight temperature. Um, so we're, we're showing some fringes there, okay? And you can see they're swinging around depending on how I tip this here. All right, so the optical flat does work, all right? And it's working on uh, daylight fluorescence right now. So one of the keys when you're doing this is everything's got to be like scrupulously clean. So when I got the optical flat, it had some scunge on it that I took off and cleaned it real carefully. And, uh, and anyway, it produced fringes right out of the box, no problem. Um, and we're going to look at it under a special light. I have a helium light source here too, which is a special wavelength so that we can um, actually uh, interpret these bands and uh, their curvatures for measurement. So let's look at something else. What do you think? Uh, let, me, let me set up the next one and uh, we'll take a look at the, the next surface and uh, see if we can see something on that. All right, this is this uh, Pratt & Whitney uh, Toolmakers flat here. So we're gonna, we're gonna try a different technique here. We're gonna put a uh, Kim wipe down first and then we'll, and these have been cleaned ahead of time. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide the Kim wipe out and then hopefully we can see some. Okay, can you see that little shimmer? Uh, yeah, it, it was actually. So you can see a little shimmer. This is this one's harder to see. The surface is not uh, great. I mean, it's actually pretty flat, but it's pitted, so and it doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, I see it's it's floating on a cushion of air right now, and uh, actually, it's almost rung to the plate now. I'm picking it up, setting it down, and yeah, this is just so hard to photograph, guys. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get it under the helium light, and uh, it's a heck of a lot easier to see then. It is producing fringes. I can see them from here, but uh, it's the camera's having a tough time uh, picking those up. Let's take a look at this other kooky surface here. Uh, that's more reflective, but it's I can tell you that it's not very flat at all. Let's do this. See what we can see on this one here. Okay, and you see that weirdness? So it's giving us a contour map of this. Let me scoot it around. It's of its non flat condition. And I think this one, uh, depending on the temperature, it has a couple of humps in it that uh, I thought you guys would get a kick out of. Uh, well, you can sort of see them. You can sort of see them. Yeah. All right, so see up here, you got some curvature, and then there's a contact point right there. And then as I push on it, it moves it around. Let's see. All right, so let's get this under some helium. Let's get these things under some helium light, and then you guys can really get a good uh, a good shot of this. Okay. All right, so we got the helium light on. It's warmed up, and you can see it's kind of got a, a kind of yellowish orange tint to it. And uh, once again, you know, it's always can almost never be too clean with this stuff. So we should get some good ones. The helium produces a really sharp, crisp uh, interference bands. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty good there. 
Well, you can see that. So the straighter those lines are, the better your surface is, okay? When they're perfectly straight, the surface is as flat as the optical flat. Um, so there's proper fringes there. And uh, so you don't read the spacing of the fringes, okay? What you're reading is you're reading their curvature. So if they're bowed, um, you know, they have a curvature to them. That's, it's like reading a topo map. So, you know, I can lean on this a little bit and you can see that the spacing changes and all that means is the little wedge of air that's between the gauge block and the optical flat is changing thicknesses, okay? Um, so there's more, as it gets thicker, it shows more, more, more lines because the wedge is thicker and the spacing between the lines stays the same. Okay, um, and that's in this case about uh, what is that 11 millionths of an inch, something like that. Okay, so this is 600 and or excuse me, it's uh, 587.6 nanometer wavelength light. So from that, we can derive the, the spacing of those lines, uh, and it's a uh, of a, a uh, integer value of uh, uh, of the wavelength or half wavelength so okay um, so that's the optical flat let's look at the Pratt & Whitney flat which is about the same thickness so my focal length should be pretty good let's see if we can get some fringes off of this I'm just gonna set that down there you go okay so now you can see them all right and you see they're nice and straight, right? So what that means is this this Pratt, this old beater Pratt & Whitney um, uh, toolmaker's flat is still pretty flat, even though it has some kind of corrosion spots on it. Now, the more let's look at this other one because it's really interesting. Let me get it set up and uh, we'll take a look at that one too. All right, you guys ready for this one? This one's pretty cool. Clean that real good. Give our optical flat a little. Spritz. All right. I'm set that down very carefully. Shoop. Now this one's got some some interesting topology here, which we can look at. So it's just this weird little corrosion spot in the middle there, and then there's a there's a little high spot over there. Actually, there's two high spots there and it looks like over here and as I push on it you know the plates tilting a little bit in relation to those high spots so it's shifting things around but uh, those are fringes and our our um, Russian optical flat seems to function as advertised and so if you guys are interested in playing around with um, uh, this kind of interferometry uh, stuff which is pretty neat stuff and um, it's accessible. These are like 60 or 70 bucks on eBay. Um, the light, um, I would suggest this going with these daylight fluorescence um, um, initially because uh, these the helium lights can be kind of expensive. So um, you can actually do some, uh, do some stuff um, with just fluorescent lights. Yeah, there you go. So it's, so as it sits there, the air kind of bleeds out and uh, it settles down even even more. And you can see we have a couple distinctive high spots there. So pretty neat stuff, though. So, Rick, uh, I'm going to send your optical flat back and uh, it seems to uh, it seems to function uh, as advertised. So uh, um, play around with it and see if you can get it to uh, um, produce some fringes. Now, you need some flat surfaces. So. Uh, Use the gauging surfaces of uh, gauge blocks or other things that uh, you're pretty sure are pretty darn flat. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.